Hello and welcome to my talk, It Starts With a Smile, How to Foster a Sense of Belonging in Remote Teams. Quick introduction into who I am. My name is Eleni Katsula, I'm the Engineering Operations Manager at Collabora and for the last two and a half years I've been an engineering people lead, taking care of our engineers and supporting them in their professional growth. Uh, my academic specialization lies in international technology management and throughout my career I've been focusing on cross-cultural communication, conflict resolution, effective liaison, and so forth. Uh, ever since, I've had a passion of working with people from different backgrounds and you know different areas of expertise. So this is why I also picked this topic. Now, first, let's look at why the topic of fostering a sense of belonging is so important. Well, first of all, it is a core value of the open source community. We do work together towards a common goal um, and being part of the open source community is a sense of belonging in itself. So any open source company, consultancy, whatever you like, um, should have the same values. It does increase job satisfaction, of course, because if you don't dread going to your job and if you enjoy it thoroughly and you feel valued and respected, then um, that has its benefits as well. And of course, you see it practically day to day. If you feel like you belong in a company and you are listened to, you have a voice, it does promote a better work-life balance because you know that when you need to take a break, you can do that. Uh, your personal life is equally important. So, you know, you don't just live for the output, um, you know, for the project that you're working on and the particular things that you need to carry out in your job you're valued as, a, as an individual, as a human being, not just as a professional. From a company level, of course, if you have a, a sense of belonging within your team, it can also reduce attrition. The market has been insane recently. You don't need me to tell you that, especially with a pandemic. And when a lot of countries were in lockdown, one aspect that people could control or could change was um, their job. You know, if you're constantly locked inside your house and you can't pursue your hobbies to a great extent, you can't go anywhere, uh, you can get fed up. It has an impact on your mental health. And we have seen that a lot of people chose a change of job just, you know, to get something new, um, have an impact, have a change, have some control over it. So the pandemic had, of course, big economic repercussions as well. So the job market was in total flux, very volatile. There has been a lot of movement and companies, you know, more than ever have been trying to keep their people and to have, keep them happy and to make sure that they feel like they belong. They're part of the team, part of a family, if you like, or part of a community. And of course, from an engineer's perspective or an employee's contractor's point of view, it can add more meaning to your work. If you feel like, um, you're part of a collective effort, you're doing something together, you belong to a team, it's not just you against the world. Uh, it's, it's less lonely and it's more collaborative. Okay, so that sounds good in theory. Um, what does it really look like? Like, what is the success criteria of having a sense of belonging at your company? Well, the golden standard, I would say, is that people of all backgrounds, seniority, skill level, identities, genders, you know, they can be themselves and they, they are embraced and accepted. Of course, everybody needs to uh, be professional in a working environment, but still there's a lot of room for individuality and that is both beautiful and important. If you do have a sense of belonging, there is a deeper, deeper connection with one another. You feel like you can connect with your employees more than just saying a hello, a good morning, a happy weekend, you know, you can uh, really feel like you have somebody to reach out and that you're part of a team. Like I mentioned earlier, you're not really dreading starting your work day. Of course, we all have tasks that we don't particularly like, <laughs> that we're not really looking forward to, right? That, that's normal, but overall, if you like your job and if you like the company that you're working for, it's less likely that you have the Monday blues, let's say, or you know, dreading to go to work. 
A very important aspect, which is really at the essence of this, is that you feel comfortable to express both your aspirations, you know, how you want to grow in your career, what you would like to do, what you would like to learn, and also your concerns, you know, everybody has a voice, but beyond that voice, it's the trust that what you have escalated or pointed out will be addressed, will be taken care of. So there needs to be a mechanism in the organization that actually supports the action items that come out of feedback and come out of you know, concerns expressed by, expressed by employees and by contractors. Because, you know, just speaking up and having it get lost in the void um, is pretty meaningless. And as I mentioned earlier in the introduction, effectively, people feel valued, supported and respected, which is very, very important. Great. How do you do it? <laughs> now, as a disclaimer, of course, I don't claim to be an expert in all theories surrounding belonging. Uh, I'm not a psychologist. I decided to do this presentation uh, because I felt like I learned a lot in this position in the, um, the last two and a half years. Uh, I wanted to also do it as a tribute to everybody who has been on my team and who I've had the pleasure of working with. It was truly an honor, you know, having them open up to me and connecting with me and letting them be, you know, part of my day to day and them accepting my help and support. So I will show you what has worked for me, what I feel personally is important, but this can also, you know, be adapted to your own style. Uh, this is just, you know, my point of view, my humble two cents to this very important topic. So let's start. Well, first of all, I put empathy, as you can see there. So empathy is kind of the ability to feel what the other person is feeling, to understand both their pain, their joy, their stress, um, all these kind of emotions, just to have a connection to understand what they're going through. Uh, this is the human element that I call the human element um, of the work, where the hierarchy or, you know, um, reporting structure or title, whatever you want to call it, it's, it doesn't matter. You're there for the other person, you listen and you try to help them in the best uh, of your, you know, uh, the best way you can. Equally important is communication. Now, I cannot stress this enough. And if you've ever watched a talk about remote work, this is the one, <laughs> you know, biggest topic. Oh, you need to communicate. You need to have frequency, you know, to have video quality. Um, you know, all sorts of things. This, this has been discussed to exhaustion, let's say. Uh, what I would like to add here from my point of view is that you need to adapt your style to the communication that each person is comfortable with. So, of course, you know, video calls um, have better engagement, you can read body language and all that. True. But if the other person isn't comfortable either looking at themselves uh, on camera or just sharing their image for whatever reason, if it makes them uncomfortable, it defeats the purpose, right? So when you communicate, you don't want, you know, the most data or, you know, you don't want to have the better picture or whatever. You want the information to go through effectively and to make this process well, pleasurable might, might be a stretch, but you know, uh, not um, painful or not difficult for the other person. So somebody might prefer to communicate through chat. Some might prefer to have a voice call. Others might prefer to have, you know, a video call. Um, the frequency also, uh, you know, I might prefer to have like calls every two weeks, but somebody else might find it better for their workload to do it once a month or for a regular follow-up once a week. I find that flexibility in the way you communicate, you know, according to the other person's preference is really crucial and it's not something that's often talked about. So I just wanted to point it out. 
Another aspect, of course, is feedback. It's very important. Uh, if you work remotely, often, you know, you don't really get much feedback. You complete your tasks, um, you move on to the next one. I'm sure you've all been there. Like you submit a patch of stream and you wait and wait and never hear anything back and you're not sure like, okay, what happened, you know? Um, it's always good to have some encouragement. So if you work with other colleagues and, you know, you notice that somebody did a really good job, either with a communication with the client or, you know, really good, um, you know, contribution upstream, very well written merge request, whatever you want to call it. You know, if you ever notice something positive, it's really good to give the other person feedback and, you know, either through the people lead or directly, it's very, very important. Equally, people need to know if what they're doing is going in the right direction. Um, if they're approaching something correctly, you know, there's so many ways of approaching something in, in the engineering field, right? Sometimes there's a right and wrong approach, but sometimes it's just much more complex, right? And you do want some feedback along the way to let you know, okay, um, if you go down this road, it might take you like a couple of months to, you know, get out of the fog or the complexity or, you know, anything like that. Um, I have tried this. You might want to give it a shot or, you know, if you want to give some tips about efficiency or if somebody's stuck um, or, you know, if there is a particular behavior that is disruptive and the person is not aware of it, it's always good to give feedback. Um, so it's super important also to know that, you know, when you get feedback, it means that people care about the work that you do and they care about your growth and they care about you, you know, doing a good job and continuously improving. Of course, there's the aspect of leadership that is very important and that can be quite challenging, especially if you have people of different areas of expertise, you know, if you have 100 people and 80 experts, it can be quite hard to get leadership, especially on the technical side. Uh, but, you know, a structure that actually um, helps with that aspect of getting some guidance and, you know, leading the teams effectively, properly, giving them the right to support, the right sense of direction. It can be, for example, um, different priorities for our efforts or the clients. Um, you know, regular progress reports or, you know, code reviews, pair pro program, sorry, pair programming, you know, all these kind of things uh, can be super useful. And um, as a manager or a team lead or whatever, uh, professional development is also very important. So this is something that you need to look after. Uh, if the individual feels like uh, you actively help them grow, and put you know mechanisms in place to support that and to encourage that then that is also super important um, to get a sense of belonging because if i feel like my manager or whoever my supervisor my team lead cares for me to learn and grow invests in it then you know i feel valued as well as an individual and as a professional at that company how can that you know sense of belonging and you know these ideals be achieved across a company. Now, I believe that you need a strong sense of purpose. Like a Calabro, we have as a raison d'être, like to contribute to the open source community and um, to help our engineers grow, etc. Uh, the corporate culture is a must here because the support and interest in the individual needs to be genuine, authentic. If you fake it, if you just do like a marketing gag or something like that, or just, you know, an initiative now and then, that's just, you know, well, let's call it fluff. It's pointless, people see through that. And, you know, it doesn't really add that much value. What is important is that individuals are able to make positive contributions on a day-to-day -day basis as part of their job. So that means giving people a, a voice, giving them the room to be creative to the best of their abilities and to really feel like they are impacting both the business, the technology they're working on, the project, that they are making a difference daily. Of course, 
as an addition to that, company-wide initiatives to promote interaction, to have some fun activities, um, or you know, have some employee engagement can be super fun and super useful. We do that too, uh, but it should be an addition to your business day to day. So you know, theory is all good, you know, but uh, I think it's always best to speak in examples. So I will show you what we do at Collabora. We have launched the engineering framework well, like three years ago, more or less. Uh, and then we divided um, technical support and individual professional guidance. So we made sure that an engineer joining our company or you know, already at our company has maximum support in all different areas. So I'll get into that a bit more in a bit more detail. We have the people leads uh, like I used to be. Uh, which focus on professional development, feedback, regular one-to-ones, on also well-being and, you know, the personal side of things. This is not really a technical one-to-one. Uh, -one. It's more like, how are you getting along? You know, how can I help? These kind of things. Uh, people leads also have cluster calls, which is a group of various engineers from different grades, uh, domains, you know, that usually don't work together. And it's a social call where you can just interact and catch up uh, about different things that are happening at the company and or you know just fun conversations about hobbies. It can really be anything. Like I I remember I used to have one cluster call where it always kind of fell on a new moon, and uh, we had the uh, sorry on a full moon, and we always had the full moon update because one of our engineers is an astrophotographer. So that was always really fun. Uh, so yeah, it can really be anything. You never know really what's, what's going to come up with those calls, but it's a fun and, you know, social engagement that can kind of break the routine of working on a particular task and just, you know, get some more engagement and more, um, you know, interaction between colleagues, which in a remote setting is quite important because it tends to be a bit lonely at times, right? Then we have the business strategy leads, uh, formerly known as domain leads. If you've been active in the open source field, I'm sure you know all of ours. <laughs> um, they're you know, very active in the field. So they are supporting our technical strategy together with senior management, of course, uh, looking at um, R&D projects, what is worth investing in in the future, what kind of commercial opportunities to um, pursue, and uh, you know, how to shape our engineering team. Uh, they also have quests, which are strategic R&D efforts that we feel are important for the community, are, you know, interesting new technologies uh, to investigate and so forth for, for potential clients. And we have the guilds as well, which are technical meetings with a particular frequency, usually twice a month where people of similar technical interests get together and have presentations about different topics or get to discuss their progress. So this can be, we have, for example, the Integration Guild, Multimedia Guild, uh, Rust, uh, Kernel, Hardware Enablement, you know, you name it. Um, any, any particular group that has a specific interest and it's good to, you know, liaise and catch up, um, that's what you do in guilds. And that's been super helpful as well. So that is engineering framework in a nutshell. Uh, another aspect that's very important that I mentioned before is 360 feedback that we do. So we encourage to uh, get feedback and give it back as well. So a good approach is to always ask for feedback first and then you know give feedback to the person. We have done extensive training on feedback uh, across our whole team. We continue to work on that, we continue to train our engineers on how to give feedback um, and how to be open and you know have it part of our culture it's very important to have a mindset where you support people's growth and you know when feedback comes from a place of i want to help you i want to um, see you grow both in your career i want you to you know get out of this particular problem area that you're having right now you know, this is for your benefit. I am coming to you from a place of improvement uh, in a collaborative spirit, not critique like, oh God, you did this, 
I don't want to work with you again. Bye bye. I'll do it myself. No, that is disruptive. That's not part of the culture. Also, what we do at Calabra to you know foster a sense of belonging is to promote our engineers being good open source citizens. How does that look like? Uh, we provide paid travel and time to participate in different conferences, such as this one. <laughs> and, you know, of course, to other open source events like hackathons and things like that. We do have an upstream policy because we believe it's super important that you have time to maintain your own projects if you wish to do that, uh, or to, you know, focus on upstream activities that might not necessarily be related to your current commercial project that you're assigned to. So that is why we put this policy in place. Whenever possible, uh, we try to weigh incoming commercial opportunities against the value to upstream and, you know, to our consulting business accordingly. And uh, of course, as I mentioned before, we do invest in strategic R&D across all of our domains, you know, significant investments of time and material in uh, areas that we believe are the future of tech, uh, that we believe are worth pursuing uh, and that we believe will help upstream and will you know, make significant improvements. Furthermore, uh, we like to display appreciation through the kudos system that we use on Mattermost. So you can send a congratulatory message uh, that reaches you know, the whole team, which is always very nice. We promote autonomy of employees and contractors. That means we trust people to uh, manage their time, to um, deliver their tasks in their own pace, to communicate when they're stuck or uh, you know if anything comes up. There is no micromanagement and that's very important. Uh, we are proud of our engineering team and you know, the people we have hired and the professionals that have you know, made such incredible contributions within our team. So that comes with the trust that they can also be autonomous and reach out whenever they need assistance. So that is also very important. It's a sign of respect for the individual. And um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, some health and well-being initiatives uh, are also active. Uh, you know, when it came uh, came to um, the pandemic, mental health was a big issue. So, you know, um, we provided support uh, globally, and we did a lot of fun events as well. In addition to lectures and um, professional presentations by specialists on different medical issues, and most recently we also had the paparazzi challenge, which was super fun, um, where. All our uh, employees, you know, were encouraged to go out for a walk, you know, and just snap pictures of something nearby, you know, and it was really nice to get to see, you know, nature from around the world. It was really beautiful and it really helps you connect as well. So it's just an example. Now, I would like to share from my experience what you need to be cautious of as a manager. Uh, when it comes to fostering a sense of belonging and, you know, using all those steps uh, that I've mentioned so far um, in your approach. So obviously you've seen caring for and supporting colleagues is very, very important. But you need to be aware of setting healthy boundaries within your professional capacity. What I mean by that is, yes, you're there to listen. Yes, you're there to help. Uh, you know, it doesn't remove anything from how much you care if at some point, you know, you say, I understand, um, would you like to talk to an XYZ professional about this, right? I'll give you a simple example. I am not um, a psychologist, or I'm not a psychiatrist, so when it comes to a medical issue, I will show empathy, but I will refer them for specialist advice because that goes beyond my own professional capability. What I have found uh, over the years is that you need to shield yourself from absorbing the struggles of others. That is uh, an, you know, a risk 
uh, when you are an empath and anybody who has the same profile as me will know this, right? Um, and it's, there's nothing wrong with compassion. It, to the contrary, it's, you know, amazing in its own way and super important. But at the end of the day, when you end your work day, you shouldn't absorb all that tension inside you because it can really be disruptive. Imagine if you have a team of 20, 30, 40 people, everybody will have, you know, something in their personal lives going on, you know, something they have talked to you about. You cannot, you know, take that in. Um, it can be quite detrimental to you. Uh, so, you know, these healthy boundaries that I mentioned can be super helpful. And of course, you know, one challenge that we always have, like if you try to be somebody's friend and, you know, support them, and understand them um, is that you need to be mindful of the responsibilities that you have both towards the individual and towards the company, right? So there's always a business um, that has certain guidelines, policies, you know, so you need to be able to weigh both and, and be fair um, within that role. So, you know, summing it all up, what does it come down to, you know, to get a sense of belonging in remote teams? Well, I'll be honest with you. For me, it's always been openness. You know, I am the way I am, you know, uh, I don't fake anything or, you know, I just, I'm honest, I'm transparent the best way I can be. And, you know, I think it's very important to have a simple and authentic connection to people. I'll give you an example. Um, I'm not known for my athletic accomplishments, <laughs> so quite often I talk about, you know, um, maybe some mishaps or uh, some adventures in my athletic endeavors. For example, I'm particularly proud of one incident where I managed to make the whole yoga class fall down. <laughs> I just love it. So, you know, these kind of things. Just be, if you're goofy, be goofy. You know, if you're quirky, be quirky. You know, why not? Uh, you know, we're all, we're all different and that kind of connects us, right? You know, don't take yourself too seriously sometimes. I think that, that helps. Uh, don't shy away from being vulnerable. That is something that I've learned. You know, sometimes you think, um, especially if you have a particular position or, you know, if you're a team lead or whatever, uh, oh, I shouldn't show, you know, this side of me, you know, today I'm not, not feeling very well, I'm a bit sad, you know, something happened. Uh, you know, I better, I better disconnect, you know. Um, I have found that being vulnerable in front of your team makes you look more human. Uh, it helps with genuine connection. And it's truly amazing what you get back. Um, I was positively surprised by the response that I had from my team when I was going through a rough time and um, how much, you know, it, how much satisfaction and how much appreciation that gave me. Um, so I think it's super important. Um, as I mentioned before, of course, active listening is very important, uh, not just taking down notes or uh -huh, uh -huh, checking boxes and then nothing happens, but truly be there to the best of your ability. Whatever you can, make sure that people have something fun and interesting to work on. Of course, you know, we don't always have control over the incoming work, but whenever the opportunity arises, you know, keep it in the back of your head to provide something, you know, enjoyable for the person to do. Uh, especially if somebody has been on a project for a really long time and they want a change of pace or change of scenery, it's good to try and accommodate that uh, so that they don't get you know, bored or demotivated. Uh, and I think it's also very important to have uh, a fun uh, and warm working environment. So it's not hostile, it's welcoming and that people in general feel comfortable at their own pace, um, at their own level of communication, as I said, their own level of involvement, um, as long as they're not you know, disregarded in any way, um, and that they feel comfortable participating in the way that they want. And of course, most importantly, smiles. 
This picture, I love it, uh, is from one of my cluster calls uh, where, to be honest, I couldn't come up with an agenda. And I just said, you know, the theme today is to wear a hat, any hat you have, a headset counts as well. And that was super fun. So, you know, that always gives me joy to look back at this picture. So thank you very much for your attention. It has been a pleasure sharing this presentation with you. I'm happy to address any questions. And you know, if following this talk, you feel like, hey, Collabora sounds like a great place to work for, you're in luck, we are hiring. So feel free to check out our job posts on the careers page. Thank you very much, bye.